Over 30 years ago, this site was transformed into what would become one of the most popular theme parks in the UK. But what went wrong, and what does it look like now? Welcome to the American Adventure, this is it. By the 1970s, the British Coal Board had finished extracting the Shipley Mine, and along with Derbyshire County Council, they set about creating a leisure park, celebrating the best of all things British. A Kent-based company called KLF were brought in to redevelop the site into a major theme park that would celebrate Britain's past, present and future. In 1985, Britannia Park opened to the public, however unfortunately the park was far from finished. The entrance area was in place, along with five of the pavilions in the British Genius area. The park also had a miniature railway line, even though much of the site hadn't even been landscaped by the point Britannia Park opened. The 1985 season proved to be a disaster, with wet weather keeping visitors away. Just weeks after the grand opening, KLF was selling shares in its business in order to pay off creditors, and some staff were even laid off after just a month of operation. Britannia Park was placed into receivership on September the 9th and the park shut its gates after just 12 weeks of operation at the end of November 1985. Derbyshire County Council had begun to look for a new owner, somebody who could redevelop the park into a success. John Rigby of Park Hall Leisure, the owner of Camelot, stepped in, backed by Granada Media, who had set up their own park based around their TV studios. The new name for the park was The American Adventure. Get your motor running Head out on the highway Looking for adventure And whatever comes our way Yeah, gotta go make it happen Take the world in a love embrace Buy all of your guns and guns and Explore the space American Adventure Theme Park. When the American Adventure first opened in 1987, it was billed as Britain's major new theme park. The park opened with a mixed variety of rides and attractions, all set around the beautiful Shipley Lake. Guests will purchase tickets here on the entrance plaza before making their way across the bridge, down the iconic steps and into the American Adventure Theme Park. Thousands of people a day would park their cars just behind me before making their way over to the entrance plaza. They'd buy their tickets and make their way into a New England village and the San Francisco War themed areas of the park. £8 million was invested in time for the park opening and the American Adventure was split into numerous themed areas. Silver City was the home of two major rides, one of which was the two-drop Cherokee Falls log flume. In 1993, Cherokee Falls was extended to have a third drop and was renamed to Nightmare Niagara. The extra drop made it the tallest log flume in the UK throughout its operational life. Today not much remains on the site of the old log flume and it's strange to think that it's over 14 years since riders were last braving that huge drop on Nightmare Niagara. Right next door was the Runaway Train, a powered coaster manufactured by Big Country Motioneering. The ride also interacted with Nightmare Niagara and its impressive rockwork theming. Just behind me was the site of the runaway train and as of February 2018 the vegetation has completely taken over the site. The ride was removed over 10 years ago and I'll always remember my first visit to the park when my father took me on the runaway train for the very first time. To this day the runaway train still operates and was purchased by Mellors and converted into a travelling ride. It also made its way over to Dubai where it operated at Global Village for several seasons. <laughs> 
Silver City was also the home of many other opening day attractions. This included the Yankee Clipper, a Zamperla swinging ship, and also High Sierra, a wagon-themed Ferris wheel also manufactured by Zamperla. Both of these attractions were located along the waterfront, providing spectacular views across Shipley Lake. When the American Adventure theme park opened in 1987, it only opened with two roller coasters. The second coaster in the lineup was Buffalo Stampede, a powered roller coaster manufactured by Zamperla. The coaster was located just behind me, in a perfect location with fantastic views across Shipley Lake. Buffalo Stampede operated throughout the park's 19 year operational life, and a mini golf course was added next to the ride. Remains of the golf course can still be seen to this day. When the park closed in 2007, Buffalo Stampede was removed and sold to Twin Lakes Theme Park in Melton Mowbray. The ride opened at the park in May 2007 and still operates in the same location to this day. Just behind me on the other side of the lake would have been the site of Lazy Lil Saloon, one of the main show venues inside of the park. Lazy Lil Saloon featured classic shootouts and Wild West showgirls. The cast of the show would sing country classics and dance to entertain the crowds throughout the saloon bar. The saloon was exceptionally well themed and back in the 80s the UK theme park industry hadn't really seen much in terms of theming. Who knows, if the American adventure hadn't have existed we may never have seen some of the fantastic themed areas that opened up many other theme parks in the UK in the following years. Right next door to Lazy Little Saloon was the arena used for the park's most popular show, the Wild West Shootout. Over the years, this arena hosted some of the best entertainment the British theme park industry has ever seen. From large scale shootouts to fantastic stunts performed with horses, I watched many shows here over the years and used to be amazed at what I once saw as a kid. Today you can still make out where these fantastic shootouts took place. It's crazy to think that if I was standing on this site 11 years ago, I'd be right in the heart of the action, right up against the fence, in my favourite place to watch the show. Entertainment was a huge part of the American adventure experience, and many different shows and characters came and went throughout the park's lifetime. Another original attraction at the park was the Santa Fe Railway, a ride that ran all the way around Shipley Lake. The train had various stations stopping in major areas of the park and was always a popular attraction. This was mainly due to the size of the park and guests wanted to be transported to different areas. It also provided excellent views of the many rides and attractions throughout the American Adventure. 1989 was a huge year for the park, with two major new attractions opening within the same year. The first of which was the Great Niagara Rapids, part of a new themed area of the park called Fort St. Lawrence. The ride was manufactured by Big Country Motioneering, a company the park had already used for previous ride installations. It later became the Rocky Mountain Rapids and operated every season until 2005, where it was closed for an overhaul. 
It then reopened in 2006 for the final year of the park's operation. In the years following the park's closure, the Rocky Mountain Rapids Trough was completely filled in, leaving it how we see it today. It's hard to follow the complete circuit of the ride, however the sides of the trough are still visible on the site, but maybe not for much longer. The second new attraction in 1989 was the installation of what would become the park's signature attraction, the Missile. This 116 foot tall Vekoma boomerang came as part of the new themed area of Spaceport USA. The ride featured three inversions and reached a top speed of 47 miles per hour. The missile was placed in a fantastic location, meaning it could be seen from everywhere inside the park. Guests flocked to see the new ride during the 1989 season, and at the time it was voted as the best roller coaster in the UK, five years before Nemesis had even opened at nearby Alton Towers. <laughs> pounds was spent on the installation of Spaceport USA and just behind me is as the area stands in February 2018. You can still easily make out the foundations for the missile and also the many other smaller rides, buildings, restaurants and other facilities that were located in this themed area of the park. The missile closed at the American Adventure at the end of the 2004 season as it was deemed to be too thrilling for the new direction of the park. After the ride was removed, it was relocated to Pleasurewood Hills in Lowestoft where it still operates to this day and is known as Wipeout. Claim just great songs, this is the beach at Pleasurewood Hills. For the next few years the park continued to grow, with guests visiting to experience the great variety of both family and thrill attractions. The next major investment came in 1995 and was a fourth roller coaster at the park. The coaster came from a small French manufacturer and was relocated from Lightwater Valley in Yorkshire. It opened under the name of Iron Wolf and was themed around the popular ITV game show Gladiator. The ride broke away from the American theme of the park. 
By now it was clear that the attention to detail made in the early years of the American adventure was absent and that most of the new rides were either unthemed or out of place in their themed areas. Iron Wolf went through various different name changes whilst in operation at the park. This included Skylooper, Twin Looper and the JCB Twin Looper. The ride still operates to this day at the Legendia theme park in Poland. By 1996, the park struggled to fill its car parks, with attendance dropping compared to previous seasons. In 1997, Granada sold the park to Venture World, a company headed up by John Broom, the original developer of Alton Towers theme park. Have a really big adventure when you come. For the 1997 season, the park was rebranded as American Adventure World in an attempt to bring in new guests to the park and with a long-term plan of dropping the American-style theming. The major new addition was the installation of an upcharge attraction. The Sky Coaster opened on a piece of land to the west of the park, near to the Twin Looper. One of my favourite areas of the park was Snake Island, with the footpath to get to the area leading off from San Francisco Wharf. At the moment, Snake Island still remains, and you can see it just behind me. The island was home to many different attractions over the years. This included the Tennessee Tentacles, a flat ride located on the island. It opened in 1987 and survived all throughout the park's operating years until it closed in 2006. For the 1998 season, whilst the park was still under John Broom's ownership, a flying island attraction was installed on the island. The observation tower was manufactured by Vacoma and was closed the following year. In 1999 and after only two years of ownership, John Broom announced that he was stepping down and American Adventure World was to be sold to the THG Group, who at the time also owned the Pontins Holiday Parks and operated the Blackpool Tower. In 1999 was the start of a major decline at the park, with numerous smaller rides removed and various sections of the park closed off from public access. The new owners did, however, decide to change the name back to the American Adventure. A major blow for the park was the closure of its main entrance building. The grand entrance that used to sit just behind me was permanently closed and a new temporary looking entrance opened much closer to the lake, close to both the Buffalo Stampede and the Twin Looper. Gone was the fantastic views of Shipley Lake emerging through the trees. Walking down the steps and seeing the missile along with many other rides was a special part of the American Adventure experience, something that was missed from this point on. What's the American Adventure like? Awesome. The American Adventure at Ilkeston, Derbyshire, just off Junction 26 of the M1. I had many visits to the American Adventure during the early 2000s. My parents would regularly bring me into the park through these gates and I have a fantastic day out enjoying the various rides and shows. 
One of my favourite areas of the park continued to be Aztec Kingdom. It used to be one of the first areas you could come into as it was located close to the original entrance to the park. However, once the entrance moved, it was one of the furthest away areas, mainly due to its location on the hillside. All that's left now of Aztec Kingdom and the Motion Master site is the remains of what was once a fantastic themed area. It's strange to see what was once a happy and thriving area of the park, flattened and ready for development. In 2005, it was all changed at the once thriving American Adventure theme park. Three major rides were closed at the park, leaving a huge gap in the ride offering for the 2005 season. Nightmare Niagara, the Missile and the Rocky Mountain Rapids were all closed, with the Missile and Nightmare Niagara never to operate again at the American Adventure. It's believed that the two water rides closed due to structural instability and water pollution problems. This was the start of the park making major cutbacks to both maintenance and with its operational changes. Yankee Clipper was also closed throughout the 2005 season, meaning another of the park's major rides was lost for the season. Hi, we're here at American Adventure theme park. It's a very nice day but also disappointing day in a little way because the rapids and another roller coaster the lock room were closed. But oh well we're on the train. We've been on two fab rides so hopefully we know it's not gonna let our day down here in American Adventure. But now so that now Dad's gonna film some American Adventure with the camera on the train. It is the rapids are shut aren't the rapids they? Rapids are shut lock flume shut Never mind, but we're going to see, find it's a bit more. Here is the runaway train. At first it goes slow, but later on, wait, he's going to have his hand rough with it in a minute. Look, he's going down there. <laughs> wait until you see it later. We're on the Buffalo, Buffalo Kingdom ride. Buffalo, oh, Stampede, Buffalo Stampede. Anyway, we're about to go with some on-ride footage. Sit back, hold tight, enjoy the ride. Here we go. Six was the final season that the American Adventure theme park operated. When the park opened for the year, things seemed like they were looking up. The marketing for the park had completely changed for 2006, using cartoon style images and a heavy emphasis on the family image. This also meant a series of new rides at the American Adventure. A new motorbike attraction opened in the building previously used for the Log Flume Station, as well as the reopening of the newly refurbished Rocky Mountain Rapids ride. The Yankee Clipper Swinging Ship also reopened for the 2006 season, after closing in 2005 for refurbishment. had tried their best to attract a new family audience. They may have invested in numerous new rides and reopened many refurbished attractions, but this still wasn't enough to save the park from closure. After 19 years of operating, on the 4th of January 2007, Venture World announced that the American Adventure theme park wouldn't be opening for the 2007 season. 
In a statement revealed at the time, the park owners said that they had invested considerably in trying to make the park a commercial success. A fall in attendance had proved impossible to overcome and the leasehold of the property went back to Derbyshire County Council. Throughout 2007 and into 2008, many of the buildings and even some ride hardware remained intact across the park. Gradually, perimeter gates and fences began to erode, meaning people could easily gain access into the site. This also meant many people took the opportunity to take one last look at the American adventure. This is how the site looked in early 2008. Towards the end of 2008 and into 2009, all of the buildings were demolished to reduce the risk of trespass, vandalism and arson attacks. However, many foundations and hard standings still remain to this day, but not for long. The closure of a theme park is always very sad, especially when it's somewhere that was close to your heart as a child. Many people were sad about the park's closure, that much so that over the years petitions have even been set up by locals to try and reopen the theme park. Other people have even used old flooring tiles to mark out where the rising attractions were. It's clear that many people had fond memories of visits to the park, myself included. So what is the future for the site of the former American Adventure theme park? There's been numerous changes to the plans for the site, hence why it still sat the way it is after the park closed 11 years ago. However, in February 2018, Waystone Developments confirmed that work on Shipley Lakeside will begin in the next few months. So what exactly are Waystone planning to build on the site? Firstly, the lake is set to remain and 307 homes will be built in different locations surrounding Shipley Lake, the first of which are set to be built by spring 2019. There will be a small business park offering industrial space and offices. There are also plans for a potential healthcare and retirement facility, along with a pub, restaurant and a possible hotel development overlooking the lake. Reclamation work is expected to start before the summer and most of the trees were already removed from the site last year. Over the past 11 years there's been many news articles about work taking place and as of February 2018 the site still remains empty. Will work be starting in the coming months to redevelop the site? I'm sure we'll soon find out. For 19 years, millions of guests came to experience the heart of the USA in a beautiful countryside setting in Derbyshire. From walking through Silver City to riding on the missile in Spaceport USA, we'll always remember the amazing days out we had at what was once one of the largest theme parks in the UK. As the builders come in and transform this into a residential development, it's important that we'll keep the park in our head and heart and always remember our own American adventure.